The Bolivian Workers' Centre has suspended the general strike and roadblocks in different regions of the country. Several European countries are adopting measures in the face of a surge in coronavirus cases. Moroccan authorities have reimposed lockdown restrictions in the city of Tangiers following a recent spike in COVID-19 cases. From the headquarters of Teleso English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south and I'm Katrina Goss. We begin in Bolivia where the Workers' Centre, together with social movements, has suspended the general strike and roadblocks in different regions of the country following the signing of a law to prevent a further postponement of the general elections. Bolivia has seen widespread protests for almost two weeks following the postponement of the general elections from September to October 18th. On Thursday, following pressure from the protesters and lawmakers of the movement towards socialism, the de facto regime agreed to sign into law the guarantees against further, further delays to the elections. In an interview with Telesur, the leader of the Bolivian Workers' Centre, the chief trade union federation of the country, stressed that workers and social movements will continue fighting for the strengthening of Bolivian democracy. The union leader also noted that the decision was made to avoid further violent confrontations in the country and denounced the recent terrorist attacks against offices of the federation. Now the instruction is for all our mobilized comrades to take a fourth break in the actions, a fourth intermission, while in permanent vigil until the general elections of October 18, to ensure that the general elections are held and also to ensure that the people can exercise their democratic right to elect their next government for the coming five years. As of today, we declare ourselves in permanent vigil and a fourth hold to the mobilizations, to follow the situation, because here the fight does not end. The fight has begun little by little. First the fight has been against the pandemic for our people's health and life. Then it has become the fight for the basic needs of education, work and against a host of layoffs. These have been the main demands of the people. Mexican authorities have announced that the border with the United States will remain closed to non-essential travel following a steady increase in COVID-19 cases in both countries. The border closure will now extend to September. Authorities noted that the decision implies an important economic impact but was being taken in order to protect public health. Mexico reported over 7,300 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking a total number to more than 500,000. Meanwhile, the death toll stands at over 55,000. Brazilian police continue forced evictions of members of the landless workers' movement in the state of Minas Gerais. State police forces are deployed in the Quilombo Grande camp for the third consecutive day, where they're conducting the forced eviction of 450 landless families who've been living, producing and working there for over two decades. The residents have denounced the extreme violence used by the security forces, which on Wednesday burned the camp premises. Despite this, the movement has reiterated that it will resist the attacks and defend the land. The Argentinian Senate has approved a law on debt payments aimed at boosting the country's economic recovery by providing tax and customs payment facilities. The plan seeks to regularise debts exceeding 500,000 million US dollars and establishes payment flexibility. The director of the Federal Administration of Public Income noted that the move is a key step to relaunching the post-COVID-19 economic recovery while also highlighting the comprehensive approach of the plan on including all productive sectors. Mr. President, this is an extension, the extension of a moratorium which gives the possibility to the national state to raise more funds and for the people and terrorists to be able to pay their taxes. These are fundamental values for the country that we received in December last year and is based on now on the economic situation of a country under a pandemic. Therefore, our country requests the support for this extension, which will be very beneficial for companies and citizens, benefiting everybody, and it will give some relief to the state financial reserves. For the taxpayers, it will mean that they can catch up with payments or due to this extension that has many advantages. Mapuche spiritual leader Celestino Cordova announced on Friday that he would conduct a dry hunger strike within 24 hours if the Chilean government does not address the demands voiced by Mapuche political prisoners. The announcement came after the Chilean Supreme Court rejected a writ of protection presented by Cordova, who requested a commutation of his prison sentence to house arrest based on the International Labour Organization's Convention 169 on Indigenous and Tribal Peoples.
Cordova has been on hunger strike for 102 days and has been admitted to hospital. Cuban Director for Epidemiology, Dr. Francisco Duran, offered an update on COVID-19 cases this Friday. After the processing and analysis of these samples, 56 people were diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in our country yesterday. And with this situation, Cuba accumulates 319,440 samples, of which 3,229 people, 1.01%, tested positive for COVID-19. And Dr. Francisco Duran also noted that there were no new COVID-19 deaths registered over the past 24 hours. 592 cases remain active, which represents 18.3 percent, while presenting a stable clinical condition. With the reports we have previously informed, we maintain 88 fatalities. We always mentioned two evacuated cases, 22 patients were discharged yesterday. In Jamaica, the political parties that will field candidates in the September 3rd general elections have agreed to a code of conduct to regulate their electoral campaigns. Jamaicans will go to the polls to elect their next government in just three weeks. The agreement on the Code of Conduct was reached during a meeting involving the political ombudsman, Donna Parchment Brown, and representatives of the ruling Jamaica Labour Party, the opposition People's National Party, and the more recently established United Independence Congress and the Jamaica Progressive Party. The agreement takes the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic into consideration, including measures to mitigate health-related risks to voters. And we'll be right back after this short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Spain announced the closure of nightclubs and banned smoking on the street without social distancing as part of a reinforcement of restrictions to slow the spread of the coronavirus. The Spanish health minister announced that the new measures will be enforced nationwide as the country battles a surge in infections, with nearly 3,000 new cases reported on Thursday. Restaurants and bars will be required to close by 1 a.m., with no new customers allowed in after midnight. Regional authorities will be required to carry out testing among groups of the population that are particularly at risk and in the areas most affected. I also want to make it clear that what we are going through now is not what it was in March or April. In terms of pressure on the hospitals, the situation is totally different. Now we cannot allow for there to be an increase in cases and therefore we take these measures today in coordination with the autonomous regions that will be applied throughout Spain. In addition to the measures taken by each autonomous community according to the pandemic's specific characteristics in the region, this will allow us in our judgment to stabilize the cases and reduce them. And despite Italy imposing mandatory coronavirus testing for all travellers arriving from Croatia, Greece, Malta and Spain, people at Malpensa Airport in Milan are not being tested for COVID-19. Travellers claim there was little information offered at the airport on arrival. Italian authorities had announced that travellers arriving at an airport, port or border crossing would be able to choose from a number of options, including rapid tests on the spot or the presentation of a certificate obtained within the last 72 hours showing they were COVID-19 free. French authorities have warned of a worsening health situation following a second wave of COVID-19 cases. The numbers are bad, signals are worrying and the situation gets worse week after week. But there is no complacency. Our fate is in our hands because we have the tools of prevention. The French know them. Washing the hands, a minimal distance of one meter, wearing a mask and being cautious in crowds, in crowded events where distancing cannot be respected and where we know we could be exposed to the virus. Prime Minister of New Zealand Jacinda Ardern has announced the extension of lockdown restrictions for another 12 days. In keeping with our precautionary approach and New Zealand's philosophy of going hard and going early, today Cabinet has agreed 
to maintain our current settings for an additional 12 days, bringing us to a full two weeks in total. Our current expectation is that by this time, the perimeter of the cluster will be identified, will be isolated, and we can move to level two in Auckland with British holidaymakers faced a scramble to get home on Friday after the UK government said it would reimpose a 14-day quarantine for travellers from France and the Netherlands. The move prompted French authorities to quickly announce a reciprocal measure. The UK government announced the measure would apply from 4am local time on Saturday. A mass exodus of the estimated 160,000 British holidaymakers currently in France was expected. France has seen a surge in coronavirus cases, reporting a almost 3,000 new cases on Friday, the highest daily figure since May. The United Kingdom has no quarantine measures in place for months, but in June imposed a blanket self-isolation requirement on all people arriving from abroad, which has since been adjusted according to the supposed risk posed by each country. European Union foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell called an extraordinary meeting of the Council of Foreign Affairs this Friday to address the situation in Belarus following the presidential elections, as well as the tensions in the eastern Mediterranean. The ministers also touched upon the situations in Lebanon, Venezuela and Bolivia. The situation in Belarus after the presidential elections last Sunday, which saw the re-election of Alexander Lukashenko, has led the European Union to warn that it could impose new sanctions against the Belarusian government. In the video conference this Friday, it was reiterated that the EU does not accept the results of the election, as presented by the Belarus Central Election Commission, and continues to support opposition forces, which Belarusian authorities have noted are being supported by foreign agents. There is a way forward towards a new Syria. And we have to pressure. Student activists at Thailand's most prestigious university defied a ban by college administrators and staged an anti-government rally on Friday as a prominent protest leader was arrested elsewhere for his involvement in a previous demonstration. Up to a thousand students gathered in a hall on the campus of Chulalongkorn University in central Bangkok to hear speeches calling for a new constitution and for the government to resign. The rally was banned by the university, which said it allows non-violent political gatherings, but was given too short notice to ensure safety. Please tell the world how fed up we are with dictatorship, with people's voices being ignored, with activists being harassed by the authorities, with enforced disappearances, with the government siding with the capitalists and leaving the rest of the people to suffer, with the law not being applied to the elites, with us, the people, not holding power. Following the annual session of the Indonesian People's Consultative Assembly on Friday, President Joko Widodo referred to economic development as the main goal for the country, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Our current goal is not to merely escape the pandemic and to get through the crisis. We are taking measures to make a big leap by making the most of the momentum of the ongoing crisis. We must make the most of this moment of crisis. We must simultaneously accordingly seize the moment. We must make Indonesia a country that is on a par with other countries. We must make our country the advanced Indonesia that we aspire to be. We have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Moroccan authorities have reimposed lockdown restrictions in the city of Tangiers following a recent spike in confirmed COVID-19 cases. Restrictions on travel to and from another eight Moroccan cities have been imposed, while several neighbourhoods in Tangiers are on a localised lockdown. Meanwhile, borders have been reopened only to Moroccan residents returning from abroad, while a mandatory quarantine must be conducted by those entering the country. Moroccan health authorities have reported over 37,000 COVID-19 cases and a death toll of 584 since the outbreak of the pandemic. 
We live in Tangier, and the situation is delicate and difficult because of the pandemic, and many cases have been recorded. We are in the first or second line at the national level, and we register a lot of cases every day. It is not normal to see this reinforced military and police presence in the city of Tangier, and in particular to see armored vehicles and police dispatchers at the entrance to our neighborhoods. But Tangier is a lively and dynamic city. The streets of Gaza City saw protests this Friday against a deal reached between Israel and the United Arab Emirates to normalize their ties. Palestinians have stressed that the move is a betrayal of Palestine and the struggle to end the Israeli occupation. We came today as a Palestinian people with its masses and leaders to tell the rulers of the Emirates that all your shares are not worth a grain of dirt from the land of Palestine. All your money, all your billions and all your oil are not equal to a drop of blood that fell from a Palestinian child. The Emirati Zionist agreement means standing next to the occupation, adopting the enemy's occupying and criminal policies and a flagrant violation of our historical rights and our national principles. And Palestinians in the West Bank also expressed their rejection of the deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, noting it betrays the Palestinian cause. What happened yesterday between the United Arab Emirates and Israel is Arab lethargy, just in order to bury the Palestinian cause. And of course, Israel is trying to earn the Arab countries through normalization in order to make them forget the Palestinian cause. The picture that appeared on the screens yesterday, the United Arab Emirates flag on the Tel Aviv municipality building and the Israeli flag on the Khalifa Tower, this is the biggest insult from a brother to us as Palestinians, with our different affiliations and after this we will see more, not only from the United Arab Emirates but from other Arab nations. An Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javed Zarif has condemned the deal between the United Arab Emirates and Israel while highlighting that the U.S. administration does not understand the region. It is true that the European countries have announced a number of initiatives, but unfortunately the current American administration has proved that it is unable to understand the political aspects in our region. They, the Americans, do not understand the reality of the Palestinian situation in occupied Palestine and they believe that through the fabricated plate United Arab Emirates and Israel agreement that they did unfortunately yesterday, they can determine the fate of Palestine. The Afghan government announced it had released the first 80 of the final 400 Taliban prisoners, paving the way for peace talks between the warring sides in Afghanistan. It is not currently known when the remaining prisoners will be released. The prisoner exchanges on both sides are part of an agreement signed in February between the United States and the Taliban to bring an end to the conflict that has lasted for almost two decades. The agreement called for the release of 5,000 Taliban prisoners held by the Afghan government and 1,000 government and military personnel held by the insurgent group. Kenyan health authorities confirmed 588 new COVID-19 cases on Friday, while the capital, Nairobi, is the hardest hit city in the country. We have 580 people who have tested positive for the virus from a total sample of 5,458, all tested within the last 24 hours. This brings now to total the number of positive cases in the country to 29,334. From our cases today, 530 are Kenyans, whereas 50 are foreigners. 336 of them are male, while 244 of them are female. And we've come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many of the stories on our website. At tellysoenglish.net, you can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Tellyso English, I'm Katrina Goss and thank you for watching.